Let's talk about the Jacksonville Jaguars. This is the last team in the AFC South. They went 1-15 and last year behind Gardner Minshew and, uh, my God, who was the other quarterback that played for him? Uh, was it Glennon? Uh, Mike Mike Glennon played yeah. a little bit. They had, uh, Jordan Luton as well started Oof. for them a few games. They almost beat the Green Bay Packers in Green Bay with yes. Jordan Luton at quarterback. Yeah, they, they actually uh, they, they fought hard in a lot of games. I'll say that. Uh, they could not yeah. get over the hump, so they end up 1-15. They get the number one overall pick. They bring in Coach Urban Meyer, who has Ugh. redone the entire staff. Of course, when a new coach comes in, that's typically what happens. But he's got a lot of college guys and a lot of old-school NFL guys. He's looking at this a lot differently than than probably most NFL front offices will look at things. Their needs, yeah. uh, at least per the online sources, safety, tight end, defensive tackle, and quarterback. Um, you know, I, Gardner Minshew, I think, is a lot of fun. But obviously, I do believe that Trevor Lawrence is an upgrade. We'll roll through the picks that they got, and oh, they've yeah. got quite a few. Quarterback Trevor Lawrence out of Clemson, running back Travis Etienne out of Clemson, both first-round picks. Uh, we will we will talk about the Etienne pick here momentarily. Quarterback Tyson mm-hmm. Campbell out of Georgia in the second round, and then another second-round pick, offensive tackle Walker Litter, a little out of Stanford. You've got safety Andre Sisco out of Syracuse in the third round. Jay Tufele out of USC, defensive interior lineman. Uh, edge rusher Jordan Smith out of UAB in the fourth round. Fifth round, tight end Luke Farrell and wide receiver Jalen Camp out of Georgia Tech. Uh, that was sixth round pick, 209 for that one. Trevor Trevor Lawrence, obviously, home run hire or home run draft, whatever, on that. Running back Travis yeah. at the end of the first round. Eh, not a big fan of that one. Um Go ahead, Kyle. I'll let you uh, jump in on it on it first. Yeah, you're so I like Travis Etienne as a player, and I was really yeah. looking. I thought Buffalo would have been a great landing spot for him because he is explosive and fit in with that offense perfectly. The reason I didn't like it for Jacksonville, first of all, you have a young running back who really set the world on fire last year, an undrafted kid, and you have so many. You're a one in fifteen football team. You have so many damn holes to fill, and they brought in Carlos Hyde as well. So you have a good running back room already, and then you bring in Travis Etienne. So what are you going to do with them? You're going to use him like a Lavisca. You have a, a switchblade yeah. guy in Lavisca Chenault already. So I'm not exactly sure how that fills any needs. And then that second round pick, Tyson Campbell. I, I like that they took a defensive back. But for me, I'm like, look, Asante Samuel Jr. is sitting out there who just seems like a ball hawk out of Florida State, and you take the wrong guy from Georgia. Georgia, I mean, Georgia never wins big games. Georgia just stinks all the time. Every time I see them in a big game, I'm betting against Georgia every single time. So, obviously, Trevor Lawrence is a home run pick. You know, John Elway, Andrew Luck, Peyton Manning type prospect here. So, you love that. Question if they're filling the holes there uh, later on. I'm not real happy with rounds uh the end of round one, round two. Walker Little, I like smart, intellectual offensive linemen, so I think yeah. that's – anytime you get an l- offensive lineman out of Stanford, you assume, look, they're a smart guy. They're going to understand how to play. They'll pick up the scheme quickly. So I like all that. So it's pretty 50-50 on here. I say overall I like it because they got, you know, what everyone thinks is going to be the next big thing at quarterback, and that's always a good place to start with your franchise. But definitely some reaches there at the end of round one and round two that make me a little less, little less excited about it than I normally would be. So this is Urban Meyer, a college coach that doesn't understand how to put together an actual team because he's never had to do it. He's had recruiters that actually go out and help him. I bet Urban has never actually sat down and recruited an offensive lineman. I'm going to bet his (laughs) line coach and his OC has always done that. And, And because he has been at Florida, especially while at Florida and at Ohio State, maybe at Utah he had to beat the bushes a little bit. But at Florida and Ohio State, Those are two places to where if you can get them into school with Florida and then at Ohio State, if you want the best offensive lineman in your state or in your area, you're just going to get them. You don't have to recruit them. You have to say, I'll take that guy, that guy, and that guy and be done with it. He doesn't understand. He's always had to work hard to out-recruit your Alabamas and your USC's and your Oklahoma's for the best running backs, the best skill players. The running back is the last piece of the puzzle that you go out and get. When the whole meal is ready, it's the parcel you sprinkle on top to make it look pretty. That's it. That's it. You can find running backs. that die. The, the dude that they're running back now was a 1,000-yard rusher last year. He let the league on fire, and I don't know his damn name. 
Okay. James Robinson. Because it doesn't matter. Because if, right. if he <laughs> fell off the truck tomorrow, they would just plug somebody else in there with another rando named James Robinson. That's like that sounds like a made up name. If a cop asked me, "Who are you? What are you doing?" That, that this yeah. is like two words that are coming out of my mouth. Okay. Yeah. It's yeah. like yeah. That, like this is the I just don't understand spending first round picks on these play. Not that the players themselves aren't great. It's right. irrelevant. It's what you do as opposed to it's the demarcation of who the next guy is behind you. When there are yeah. dudes that nobody knows their names and they're top five or top 10 running backs in the league, then everybody who sits behind Kyle Shanahan and runs the football is going to be a top five running back. It doesn't matter where you are, what you came from, what size you are. You could be big. You could be little. You could be fast. You could be slow. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's Kyle Shanahan's going to make you a top five running back. That's what right. you're going to be. So why spend draft capital like that when you have lots of other needs? Urban Meyer doesn't understand that because he's never actually put together an entire team. Let me let me play devil's advocate here. You're bringing in your number one pick, Trevor Lawrence. You want to make sure that he is super comfortable. So you go and get his best buddy from Clemson with your, your other first-round pick to make sure that you can actually get him. It, when now, I don't believe when you're in that. you're letting a guy that's never been on the roster before – Pick your second first round, another first round. Yeah, that's pick. a little bit of an issue. I'll, I'll admit what that. the hell are we doing? What does Trevor <laughs> Lawrence know about about running yeah. an NFL franchise? Uh, nothing. What does he know nothing. about that locker room? You I, I agree day. with you. I agree with you. I I don't like the pick there, but uh, but that's uh, to me that's the only logical if we're explanation. To make somebody feel comfortable. You know what? We just took you first overall. We're about to pay you an obscene amount of money and then we're still going to tell you you're carrying the, the the shoulder pads for everybody, rookie. Yeah. Okay? Like no, 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 no. We've made you feel comfortable already by giving yeah. you the first round pick and the first overall pick and the first first overall money, all right? I'm not bringing in your friends just because they're your friends. If like like you don't get to say, "Oh, well Joe Burrow got Jamar Chase." And you don't get to say like these other like guys here all of those receivers that they brought in were top tier talent anyway at a position that you actually right. need top tier talent running back is not that position and and this is just not what you do you don't do that to make him feel comfortable screw that uh the luke farrell pick yeah. in the fifth round uh was not a big fan of that obviously because brevin jordan was still on the board he went two picks later to the texans and and he was a much more productive yeah. tight end at Miami than Luke Farrell was at Ohio State. Now, obviously, Farrell played for Urban Meyer at Ohio State, but he wasn't even on, like, the PFF draft board. He was not a guy that was being uh, looked at to really be drafted. He he was maybe a seventh-round guy, and they took him in the fifth round in the top 150 picks. That didn't make sense to me. Uh, I do like Jordan Smith out of UAB. Like, he's not the the most athletic guy. Uh, Andre Sisco out of Syracuse, that's a guy that consistently plays out of position but is, like, Boom or bust. If you can get him to, uh, if you can teach him a little better about where he's supposed to be on the field, uh, he's more of a ball hawk, and and I think that's good. They, you know, you're you're in the third round, take some shots. Like go and get a guy that's immensely talented, and maybe you can uh, develop him. Jay Tufeli out of USC, I like him. Um, so I like him a yeah. lot too. I think that's. I mean, I don't think every pick they made was bad. I just can't. I just it, can't it, get the behind. only I, way. You wasted a first round yeah, pick. The only way a team that's not very good. The only yeah. way that the Travis Etienne pick will work yep. is if you turn him into uh, a unicorn. Basically, if you turn him into uh, Christian McCaffrey or something like that, like where he is as effective as a yep. wide receiver as he is as a running back, and and that's something that uh, there's and, one and guy. Even, even economically, your James Robinson was an undrafted free agent that you're paying like two hundred grand a year, and you're like, you know what? We want to pay another running back a shit ton of money because we drafted him in the first round when your secondary was one of the worst secondaries I've ever yeah. seen in my yeah. life last year. Their defense, they couldn't stop anybody, and you're like, uh, I mean, you want to make Trevor Lawrence comfortable? Get him the ball back, and so he's not standing on the sideline for eight minutes while teams drive up and down the field seven times a game and put up forty-five points. Take the pressure off in that way. Not giving him his buddy running back. Who gives a damn about a running back? Nobody. <laughs> get, You're absolutely, get, get, get absolutely right. Nobody cares about a damn running back. Yeah. If you if you ask the quarterback, what would they rather have? A great running back or extra possessions? They're going to say extra possessions. Give yes. me more shots at the apple. Give yeah. me more downs all day long. And so if you get me yeah. a defensive Absolutely. player that can get me the ball back and, and stop the other team's offense and make them punt or or with a turnover, I'll take that all day long over almost any – outside of an elite wide receiver, they would take that over everything else. 
Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.